You've probably heard about folk remedies from your grandparents or parents. It seems simple and safe, time-tested. What could possibly go wrong? And then sensitivity, cracks, bleeding, cavities. Today, we'll discuss how folk remedies can either help or harm you. 70% of people turn to home remedies for whitening and tooth pain because they're afraid of going to the dentist. But it's important to understand that home treatment isn't always a good thing. Today we'll go over the 10 most popular home methods and find out which ones actually work and which are better left untried. The most popular remedy, of course, is baking soda, which is most often used for teeth whitening. This remedy can certainly help if we use it very rarely, your teeth may become whiter. But there's a very important point here, it's the so-called abrasive property of baking soda. That is, unfortunately, baking soda can severely or aggressively damage our enamel, which will be difficult to restore later. The method does actually work and is applicable, but only if you use it no more than once a month. The next home remedy is hydrogen peroxide, which is also most often used for teeth whitening. This is because all whitening products are based on hydrogen peroxide and many people mistakenly believe that simply rinsing your mouth with regular hydrogen peroxide will whiten your teeth. Of course, that's not the case. Pharmacy grade hydrogen peroxide is a good disinfectant, but it can in fact damage your enamel. In addition to causing enamel hypersensitivity, it can also burn the mucous membrane. I do not recommend using hydrogen peroxide for whitening, but hydrogen peroxide can be used if you have some kind of injury to the mucous membrane. Rinsing once won't do any harm and will actually be beneficial. The next remedy is activated charcoal. Sometimes it's the kind you get at the pharmacy and sometimes it's just regular wood charcoal. People use it for whitening teeth, or let's say cleaning teeth, since charcoal has abrasive properties, they try to apply charcoal to their teeth to scrub off plaque. And as a result, it seems to people that their teeth become whiter. There is actually a bit of truth to this, but the approach here is the same. If you do this once a month, well, it's probably fine and won't really cause much harm. But if you do it often, it really can damage the enamel in the same way, injuring it, which leads to frequent cavities and enamel destruction. The next remedy is vegetable oil or coconut oil. That is, it is most often used either to reduce some kind of inflammation, or sometimes it is believed that, let's say, it helps reduce plaque formation, since the oil is thought to kill bacteria. A person takes some oil into their mouth, swishes it around for 10 to 15 minutes, and then spits it out. And this is supposed to, let's say, help. In fact, I think this is a completely harmless remedy. If you don't overuse it, and most importantly, if you don't swallow the oil, then it is neither harmful nor beneficial. Our next remedies are those aimed directly at relieving toothache. First and foremost is garlic. The most common remedy, which is primarily used externally, is to cut a clove of garlic and apply it directly to the wrist at the pulse point, secure it with a cloth, and uh, walk around like that. This is supposed to relieve the pain. The same is done with garlic. They crush it into a paste and apply it directly into the carious cavity or the decayed tooth. If we're talking about applying garlic directly to the pulse point to relieve pain, I believe this is completely useless. If we're talking about garlic that a uh, patient applies directly to the aching tooth and uh, right into the uh, cavity itself, then yes, there is definitely some relief. That's exactly why it's so popular, because people use it and it really does help. Thanks to a certain enzyme contained in garlic, these are its usual bactericidal properties, which, yes, definitely do temporarily inhibit the growth of bacteria. As a child, I use garlic quite often, applying it directly, of course, to the pulse point. It even helped me. Now I can't say what it was related to, whether it was psychosomatic or just my mindset. As a specialist, of course, I do not recommend this. The next remedy, which can be found in every home medicine cabinet, is iodine tincture. The patient takes a cotton swab, soaks it in iodine, and applies it or places it directly into the carious cavity, then waits for the effect. In reality, the effect here is probably exactly the same as with garlic. That is, 
Undoubtedly, it might feel better for a while, simply because iodine disinfects, first of all. Secondly, there is a slight warming effect, which can temporarily provide some relief. This method is completely useless and even dangerous. I will talk about this a bit later. The next remedy is salt and baking soda. So, the patient takes a spoonful of salt, a spoonful of baking soda, mixes it all in a glass of warm water, and rinses either the affected area or the aching tooth. And yes, it does help with certain inflammatory conditions directly on the surface of the gums. Inflammatory processes, some erosions. This method is absolutely applicable, but let's say with great caution and only for certain external inflammatory processes. The next remedy is just as common in our medicine cabinets. And it is considered a medicinal product. It's the ordinary basic analgene, which patients take not only orally to relieve pain, but also try to place directly into the tooth itself, of course, expecting it to work. They say it helps. Undoubtedly, when taken orally, it will, of course, have an effect. For a certain period of time, analgene will definitely relieve the pain, but it's only temporary and does nothing to address the cause. And placing analgene directly into a carious cavity or a decayed tooth brings neither harm nor benefit. And the most popular of all folk remedies is, of course, vodka or moonshine. Besides the fact that, of course, people like to use it for pain relief by drinking it, and it really does numb the pain, allowing the patient to go without pain for quite a while. But this effect is completely temporary and usually wears off the next day and can even worsen the situation. People also use it as a mouth rinse. That is, the patient actually fills their mouth with it and most often holds it on the side of the aching tooth or affected area. And this is very dangerous. It causes a burn to the mucous membrane. So, in addition to trying to relieve the pain, your mouth will end up hurting because you've burned your gum. This remedy is very insidious, dangerous, and should absolutely not be used. All folk remedies only provide temporary relief. And most importantly, they can obscure the overall picture. This temporary relief may seem like a solution to the problem or even a cure, but in reality, that's not the case. And most of the time we see such patients when they already come in with complications, any toothache is a signal or indicator for us. This is exactly how our body signals to us that something is wrong. You need to act quickly and uh, seek medical help. If you've ever tried anything from this list, write in the comments about your results and how it affected your teeth. I would be interested to read about your experience and so would other viewers. Give this video a like if it helped you see home life hacks in a new light. See you next time. Take care of yourself and your loved ones.